What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I've got something really interesting and today I'm going to be talking about complex advanced trusses in Revit. So a few videos ago I've created a tutorial on trusses in Revit but that was only using the basic truss families that come with Revit. Now these are all fine and well uh, if they fit your project but in some cases you are going to find yourself in a need for a more complex uh, truss a family that you want might want to construct yourself. So in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to actually model or create that truss family yourself so you can achieve a more complex uh, truss system in Revit. So uh, before I get into that tutorial I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also make sure to subscribe I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make uh, a few tutorials and also I make one advanced Balkan architect course. All of these courses can be found on my Patreon. First a link in the description takes you there and also there of course you can find uh, all of my Revit project files. So I've got over 50 hours of content plus over 500 Revit files so if you're interested check it out first a link in the description okay with that out of the way let's get straight into the tutorial okay so here I am in Revit and this is the project that I'm going to be using this is an old gas station that I've modeled uh, a while back so this is something that I'm going to be using for creating this advanced truss now to create a roof uh, over uh, this gas station that we have here, what I'm going to do is just go here to the project browser, navigate to our east elevation, and that's going to open up here the east view of our uh, gas station. Now I've cleaned up, cleaned up this view a little bit. Uh, if I just go here to uh, reveal hidden elements, you're going to notice that here we had some uh, buildings uh, all around, so on and so forth. So I've just cleaned it up just a little bit uh, to, to make it a bit easier to see what we're working with. Okay, so this is the building. So what I'm going to do now is go here to architecture and then I'm going to go to the roof tool. Just open up the drop menu to find the roof by extrusion option. And then I'm just going to click that. Now here we have the option to pick the work plane on which we're going to be placing this. So just pick a plane that's perpendicular to you in this view. So I'm just going to go with pick a plane, click OK. And then I can just pick this panel, for example, this curtain panel, and then it's going to ask me what do I want to have as my roof level. Now I'm just going to choose this. This means roof in Serbian. So anyways, now we can sketch out our roof. So what I'm going to do is go here to the arc uh, tool, the start and arc uh, radius arc, and then I'm going to pick a line over here or a point over here, then a point here a little bit above, and then uh, create an arc that looks kind of like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times, maybe extend it a little bit. There we go, hit finish. And now if I just go to the default 3D view, you're going to notice that we have something that looks like this. Now, of course, this looks a bit silly, so we have to select it. And then we get drag points, one over here, and then the other one is over here. So what you need to do is you need to drag this over the beginning of this gas station and then drag this over to the end of that gas station just like that. So there we go. Now we have our roof over our gas station. So I'm really happy with the with the way this looks and now we're supposed to create some sort of a construction for this. And for that I'm going to be creating a truss or using the truss tool. Now if I go here to the uh, structure tab and if we go here into trusses you're going to notice that none are loaded in and we have to load in a structural truss family so that's okay I'm just going to click here yes and then we go to the US metric library and if I just scroll down a little bit I can find here structural trusses. Okay, so I'm just going to double click to open up the folder and you're going to notice that we have many options. Now, the best way to go through these options is to select the first truss and then uh, here in the preview, you're going to see what that looks like. Now, you can just use the arrow keys to kind of scroll all the way down and you can see all of the options that Revit has here on offer. But the problem is none of these options really fits our, uh, our roof. So I need to cancel out of this menu and we need to create a new truss for our roof construction. So for that, what I'm going to do is go here to the file menu, go to new, 
and then we have to go to family. So we're going to be creating our new trust as a trust family and then later on we're going to be placing it in our project. Now you might be thinking at this point, why don't I just go to architecture to component and just model a trust in place? Well, the reason for that is what if we create a trust as a family, we're going to be able to apply different uh, structural framing or different beams to that trust and it's going to be a lot more versatile and we're going to be able to make a lot more adjustments along the way, which I always find useful. So go here to file, uh, go to new, go to family. And then here we are going to get all of the uh, family templates. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, we should have the structural families and here we have uh, the uh, structural trusses. So I'm just going to open that up. And there we go, it looks like this. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is go back here to East Elevation and let's just measure uh, this roof. So what I'm going to do is go maybe here to dimension, align dimension, measure from here to here and it's 11 so okay the value is uh 10 point uh, okay so let's say this truss should be uh let's just call it 10 so just round it off at 10 meters so here i can go to this dimension and just type in uh 10,000 because this is in millimeters so this should be just 10 and now we have this smaller truss now for the height we can bring this up uh, a little bit let's see or we can just go to the parameter, make it a bit smaller. So the, the, the height of this truss is probably not going to be 3000. It's going to be something like 800, maybe even less. But for now, let's just leave it like this. Okay, so now it's time to start placing elements. So here for this truss, if I go to the create tab, you're going to notice that instead of our detail lines, uh, we have the detail options. So here we have the top chord, web and then bottom chord. So uh, we're going to be using these tools in order to create our uh, our truss. Go back here into East Elevation. Now what we have to do is we need to find a way to load this shape into our truss family. Now it's not as simple as just selecting the roof and copying it into the truss family because you can't really have roof elements or model elements inside of this truss family. So the only option that we do have is to go here to annotate, then go to detail lines, and then here for the line style, I'm just going to go with the lines, and then I'm going to use pick lines to select this top line of our roof. So once I have done that, I can just hit the escape key a couple of times to exit out of that line command, select this line. So make sure that here in the properties, it says lines, so you don't accidentally select the roof. So make sure just to select the line, you go and uh, type in control C to copy, or you can just go here to the clipboard. Uh, and then I'm going to go here to our uh, trust family, uh, type in control V to paste, and then I can just paste it, paste it like this. So I'm going to place it here just like that. So I can have the idea of what this shape might look like. So let's say I'm happy with this. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to go back here to create and then I can create a top chord. So I'm just going to pick this line here for my top chord. So if I select this, it's lines, let's see. Okay, and here we have the top chord if I delete that lines line. Okay, so once we have the top chord, let's go back into create. Then we have the option for the bottom chord. Now I'm going to use pick lines again and then I'm just going to give it an offset maybe a, an 800 millimeter offset. So let's try that. There we go. Okay, this might be a bit too much. So let's try, uh, let's try 600. Let's see what that would look like. Yeah, I think this is reasonable enough. I mean, I'm not really trying to do anything specific, just make it look like a good looking truss. Okay, so let's go back into create. Let's go with the web. So we have uh, now the, the web. So I'm just going to add one element like this uh, over here. So if I select this, there we go. We have that line. Now let's go here to create web again. And let's create one line over here. And then I'm just going to add a few lines along the way, just like this. Okay, let's say this is enough. 
Okay, so once we have all of these lines in place, the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, go here to the measure tool, uh, and I'm just going to choose the align dimension. So what you want to do is you want to dimension all of these vertical uh, web lines. So just do that, and then here we have the EQ option to equalize the distances, and there we go, now all distances are equal. So once we have that done, now we can, uh, well, we can resize all of these. So make sure that they go from the bottom cord all the way up to top cord. Let's just finish all of these. Uh, it's a good thing that there aren't too many, so it's not a problem. There we go. And for the beginning and for the end, I'm just going to go here to the Modify uh, panel, use the Trim and Extend to Corner tool, you can use the TR extension, and then just trim and extend these. Okay, hit the Escape key a couple of times to exit out of that. And now I'm going to go to Create, and then go again to Web, and let's just create these lines here. So you want to go from the bottom here, from the bottom left corner to the top right corner, just like this. There we go, looks decent. Hit the Escape key a couple of times, and there we go, we have our truss. Uh, now, of course, this truss isn't that parametric. Now, of course, you can uh, you can uh, model this as a parametric truss. Now, in this case, I just want a 10 meter truss, so I can just work with this. Uh, if you want to make it parametric, you would have to kind of add a bit more constraints, lock things in place. But for now, let's just leave it as is. Okay, so once we have this truss, I'm going to hit the save icon, and then let's save it on the desktop as a, uh, let's call it advanced truss. Hit enter, there we go, we can go back here into our project. Now what I'm going to navigate to is going to be the roof level, this is the roof level, let's just go to rename and call it roof. There we go. Okay, so once we are here, now the next thing that I'm going to do is go to structure, uh, go to trusses, and let's load the one in now, once we finally have the family, go to desktop and let's find that advanced truss. I click open and here I'm going to click once over here and then extend it and just type in uh, let's see okay so just go and make it 10 meters there we go so we have our trust here now we can go to our elevation let's see what that looks like okay this looks a bit odd so what what we need to do now is to kind of play around with this and fix it up now you may have noticed that this looks horrible, so there are a few changes that we have to make to this truss. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to load in some beam families that are going to fit our truss. So currently our truss is using the only beam that's loaded in, and if I go here to structure, go to beam, you're going to, oops, uh, let's go in one of the floor plans, let's go to the roof. So if I go here to beam, you're going to notice that this one is the only one, uh, the only option that we have, and it's way too large. So what I'm going to do is go here to load family, and then go to the, your metric library, uh, scroll down a little bit until you can find your structural framing folder, open that up, here let's go into steel, and then here we have many options. So if I select this one here, uh, I can see the preview on this side, and I can just use the arrow keys to kind of scroll all the way down. Now, I don't want to use most of these. Okay, this one looks good. Perhaps, let's see, what else do we have? Yeah, I think that one, uh, the square one, looks really cool, so... It's this one. Yeah, I, I really like this one. So I'm just going to double click on that one. And now we have to pick a size. Now, of course, these are all way too large. So let's go with something smaller. So let's see. So I'm going to load uh, in this, perhaps, the uh, 127 by uh, 76 for our top and bottom cords. And then I want to load in something like. 76 by 76 if we have that yeah for the uh, kind of the those cross uh, chords uh, in between so let's just click ok 
there we go so now as you can see we have two types loaded in the 76 by 76 and the once uh, 127 by 76 so uh, let's hit the escape key a couple of times and let's go back into our east elevation okay so once we're here we need to select our truss our huge uh, hor horrifying truss and then go here into edit type so here we have the top chord and then we have the option to set framing type so here I'm going to choose the larger one next we have the vertical webs so for that one let's go with the smaller one then we have the diagonal webs I'm going to go with the smaller one and then we have the bottom chord I'm going to go with the uh, big one there we go so that's pretty much it as far as setting up the beams hit apply Okay, and now this looks a bit better. Now, still, it doesn't have that arc that we want to have. And the reason for that is because once we've placed this, Revit gave it this minus 2.5 meter offset. I'm not really sure why, but that's a problem. So if you just click there and just type in zero and hit enter and apply, this will fix itself. So as you can see, it goes back where it should. Now we can select this truss and kind of position it here above our uh, above our gas station next I'm just going to delete this uh, line and move the roof a little bit up okay so once we have this truss created now we have to fix it up a little bit and you can do that by using the cope tools so if you go here to modify uh, you're going to notice that here we have the uh, option to cope uh, geometry so the first thing before we get into that is we have to kind of unpin all of these uh, elements. So for that, let's see, do we have uh, an option to unpin? Yeah, I think if I just make a cross selection like this, there we go. Go into filter, go with check none, then select just structural framing, both cords and web. Click apply. Okay. Now I can just go straight here to the modify panel, go to the uh, modify uh, panel and then just unpin it. You can use the UP shortcut. There we go. So they're all unpinned. So once you unpin them, you can use the tab key to select the actual element and then you can kind of stretch it out a little bit like this. You can play around with the shape. Uh, here for this one, we can maybe stretch it down select this one so just hover over the element hit the tab key once and then you can select it so extend this like that there we go so you basically play around like that and extend all of these elements let's extend this one and extend this one and then this one so once all of these are extended now we have to fix them up maybe turn off shadows to see everything better there we go so to f and maybe use thin lines. Yeah, I think this is, makes it a lot easier. Okay, so once we're here, the next thing that we need to do is to cope all of this. So you go here to cope. You select first the element to be coped. In this case, that might be this. Then the element that's doing the coping, which is this. Okay, let's see, it doesn't work for some reason. And that is one of the common problems with these trusses. If you have an arced truss, you're not going to be able to cope it. So just keep that in mind. So the, the only thing that you can do is just extend it a little bit. And just because all of these uh, these cords are smaller than the, uh, or the, the web is smaller than the cords, uh, well then just because of that, you're going to have a situation where it uh, does look okay. So here, if we take a look through this uh, it's, it's going to look uh, it's going to look fairly okay you can maybe select even smaller webs to to make it kind of fit within that top cord uh, but that's that's just up to you okay so once we have done that we can go maybe to our roof uh, level try to find that uh, try to find that truss so let's see Okay, we probably can't see it because it's a bit too low, so we can bring it up a little bit. Let's see now. Maybe we can add, uh, maybe we can go here to this lower roof. Okay, let's just rename this one into lower roof. Okay, there we go. So this is our truss. Now we can just copy it and I'm going to copy it multiple times. So maybe at the distance of five meters. Let's see. 
copy it again here and maybe once again here and then you can go to the other side like this just a few more times there we go okay so once we have that let's just extend our roof to go up to here then up to here and then also we have to go down to our east elevation we need to go here into edit profile and then we just what we want to do is get rid of this hit the delete use pick lines and then pick perhaps this line uh, bring it up a little bit let's see so we want to follow that upper line of our Russ, let's see, kind of like that. There we go, hit the finish. And then we can maybe bring this up a little bit so it sits exactly on top. And then of course you can play around with the thickness of the roof. Maybe you can bring it down a little bit and go with a smaller option and so on and so forth. But there you go, that's how you can create these complex roof with trusses in Revit. And of course, it might make sense to uh, create a, a few more uh, elements running lengthwise, connecting all of these together. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. That's how you can create these complex trusses in Revit. It is a little bit of work, and unfortunately, we can't cope it in a way we can for a regular truss, uh, but let's hope that Autodesk changes, changes that in the next edition of Revit. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.